if you're ready for the word, shout, I'm ready. Give me a little more here in the monitors. Let me tell you this. I always want to wish you a Merry Christmas. My custom is to stand for the reading of God's Word. And I'm, I'm warning you, I'm coming for you today. I feel like preaching right here at Christmas time. Did anybody come? You can say, Pastor, preach to me. I came to get the Word this morning. Anybody? I love you so much. This is the best place to preach in, on the planet. You by live stream. Let's welcome our live stream church right now. Thank you for being with us. So, I'm coming today from Luke chapter 2, and I'm just going to read parts of the passages from this chapter, and it's going to be very, very powerful. It says here, now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping their flocks by night. I've been right there at Bethlehem, and they call it the shepherd's fields, and it is something to see. And the Bible said, and behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy that will be to all people. That's all of us in the room. Hallelujah. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel of a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. Peace on the earth and goodwill toward men. Then look at verse 25. Behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation, the coming of the Messiah. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed him and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then look at verse 36. Anna, a prophet was also there in the temple, a prophet. Somebody say a prophet. Yeah, for all you people that think women need to be quiet, don't have anything to say, I don't know how Anna's going to prophesy without talking. Can I get a witness? Uh, that's a whole nother message there. But anyway, Anna, a prophet, was also there in the temple. She was the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher, and she was very old. Her husband died when they had been married only seven years. Then she lived as a widow until the age of 84. She never left the temple but stayed there day and night worshiping God with fasting and prayer. And coming, verse 38, in that instant, she's there and the Messiah comes in. And in that instant, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those who look for the redemption of Jerusalem. In that instant. I've come to tell you that God is about to turn some things around in your life in an instant. I said, there's some things you've wrestled with and God is going to, he's going to sweep in. And if he can do it then, I believe he can do it today. Amen. So I, I just feel this in my spirit. I'm going to preach today Christmas at another level. How many of you want an unusual Christmas this year? I mean, not unusual because of the drama, unusual because of the breakthrough. Anybody ready for that? If you're ready for Christmas on another level, just slip up your hands. Father, release anointing in this house as I teach and preach your word. Be glorified, and I thank you. Somebody who loves the Lord, give him a great big praise. Hallelujah. All right, you can be seated. I want to talk about the central characters here in the book of Luke. And I believe I'm really going to unpack some things that will encourage you because I believe that Jesus is the reason for the season. I know that can sound cliche, but there is no Christmas without the Christ. So I want to talk to you for a few minutes about the central characters, as I said here in Luke chapter 2. They, they are the shepherds, they're Simeon, and then, of course, it's Anna. And I'm warning you today, I have a download that's going to set your life on fire in Jesus' name. 
because there's three things that I noticed here in this text. In verse 8, it said that the shepherds watched. But then in verse 25, it said that Simeon waited. And then in verse 37, it said that Anna worshiped. And I don't want you to underestimate the power of watching, waiting, and worshiping. I don't want you to underestimate what God can do while you wait, while you watch, and while you worship. And I'm warning you today, this is the Sunday that the devil wanted you to stay home because I've come to deposit hope in this time of hope and tell you that the Lord is still at work. He's still in business. He can still do exceedingly abundantly far above anything you can ask or think just watch just wait and just worship are there any worshipers in the house today now it says in verse 8 that there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields keeping watch over their flocks by night now Here's what I want to show you. Number one, the shepherds watched. This came alive in my spirit. These shepherds were keeping watch over the flocks and they were doing it at night. Now, I learned this many years ago that most people, Bible theologians believe that these shepherds, due to their location, weren't just watching regular, everyday, ordinary sheep, but they were attending to lambs that were raised for a particular duty in the temple. These were actually sacrificial lambs, lambs who would be reared and raised and protected because of their function, and they were to be sacrificed, and their blood was to be shed in the temple, in the Holy of Holies, to cover the transgressions of the Jewish people. But can you imagine they are there keeping watch over these lambs when the angels appeared. It's like the angels said, get ready, there's a lamb about to be born that's going to replace every one of these earthly lambs. Glory to God in the highest peace on the earth. Now watch this. It says that they were keeping watch. Now if you define that in the Greek, it means this, to keep your eye on to preserve and take care of, to remain on duty, particularly at night. Now, these men kept watch over the precious in the darkest, most vulnerable time of night when the wolves were out and when the predators were out. They were keeping watch. And we live in a society right now, it seems like that that we have been in our darkest times. And the question is, where is the church that is keeping watch? Where is the church that has its eyes open? Where is the church that is not going to sleep? The Bible said, and behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were greatly afraid. And if you look at the word glory, it is the word doxa, where we get the word doxicology. It literally means magnificent. It means preeminence. It means an incredible condition of blessedness. So that means right in the darkness, right at the most vulnerable time, right at the most intense time, the glory of the Lord shone shown round about them and one of the things that the devil wants to do is to convince you that in your night season that God won't show up that his glory won't show up that you can't be blessed in a season like that but I came to blow the trumpet in Zion and tell you that he still shows up where people are watching I said he still shows up where people are watching oh I love the fact that that he shows up, that the Lord makes this announcement, all of heaven does, to a group of lowly shepherds. That's why you can't underestimate anybody. God will use people you don't even like. Come on. I said God will use people you don't even like. God's not going to kill them because you don't like them. Come on now. He'll probably get them in this church and make them sit by you. Preach Pastor Rayleigh. These shepherds experienced the supernatural manifestation of God's power because they kept watch over the precious. 
There was nothing more precious to those Jews than those lambs because everything hinged on those lambs being sacrificed for them. And in this Christmas season, I believe God wants to reveal his miracle power like never before. But I've come, I'm only going to stay here a minute, but we've got to keep watch over the precious. It's time to keep watch over the precious. I'm afraid that the enemy in many ways has come to rob us of a generation the devil is trying to steal our children, steal our joy. We worried so much in these last years about place, position, power, and political correctness that we have lost our sight on the precious. We have allowed Christmas time to be secularized and emptied of its true meaning and significance. But there is a generation that is rising up. You're watching over your children. You're watching over the next generation. You're watching over the precious. I want somebody who wants to watch over the precious. Give the Lord a great big praise right now. I mean, we've so secularized Christmas time. And listen, I don't have a problem with Santa Claus or any of that. But Santa's not the Savior. Come on, somebody. I said Santa's not the Savior. Don't forget to tell them the real meaning of Christmas. Who would have ever thought there would be a day when two words would be controversial? Merry Christmas. You know, I was at the store yesterday, and, and I was with my wife, and we were at the Great Tribulation. I mean, no, we were at the mall. Come on, somebody. And, and every place we checked out, they said, happy holidays, happy holidays. You know what I said? I said, Merry Christmas. They've been instructed by their bosses and leaders and, and, and corporate uh, officials that they no longer are allowed to say Merry Christmas. I say the devil is a liar. Where is the church that will open up your mouth and say the only reason there is a Christmas is because Jesus came to us when we couldn't get to him. Who would have ever thought, y'all, I'd better get back up. Who would have ever thought there would come a day when we would be wasting our time on judicial formats where people would be, where judges would be ruling or whether or not you could have a manger scene at a courthouse or a high school. The devil is a liar. This is still a nation that is one nation under God, built on the foundations of Jesus Christ, and we are not ashamed of him. Come on, somebody. We are flawed and imperfect, but where is the church that's keeping watch? Come on now. Here's what I think, and I'm only going to stay here a minute because I know, Pastor, it's Christmas time. I'm going I'm to help you. But here's what I think, y'all. We've given up too much ground. I said we, I, we've surrendered too much ground. And it's time for us to wake up and keep watch. Here's the deal. I believe that there is a church rising up in the last days that we're going to keep our eyes on the precious and we're going to guard the precious. We've got some mothers in here who are going to guard the precious. How many of you mamas can say you're not having my children or my grandchildren? No, I want to hear from the radical women. Where are the radical women? I'm talking about jerk your neck, snap your finger. I'm looking for the women who will say, devil, you will not have my son, my daughter, my children, my marriage. Where are the fathers that will rise up and say, this boy right here is going to be a mighty man of God. Where are the fathers and the mothers uh, that, will that will watch over the precious? Where are the pastors? and the bishops and the evangelists that care more about the precious than they do about their money and about their bank accounts and about being politically correct. I believe in the last days there are going to be some people that rise up and ministers that rise up that's going to get the church, the church's eyes back on the word of God, the power of God, and the presence of Jesus. If you want that, give the Lord a mighty praise right now. See, the Bible says that, know this, if the master of the house had known the hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed the house to be broken into. 
I'm telling you this, you break into my house, you're going to have trouble. I know I, I, I laugh and smile a lot. Anybody around me know I'm real tender hearted. But if you break in on my house, you're going to be prayed for because you're going to need it after I shoot you. Come on, somebody. You come in to harm the Rayleigh girls, you got to come through Big Daddy. Can I get a witness in the house? I'm telling you, Jesus arrives where people know how to watch. And I'm looking like I've never been looking for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I'm looking for revival like I've never experienced it. Outpouring like I've never experienced it. Repentance like I've never experienced it. And I rise to tell the people who've got your eyes in the right place that miracles are coming. Breakthrough is coming. And see, there are even people in your life that has told you, you know what, just give up. The salvation of your son won't happen. The breakthrough with your daughter won't happen. You'll never be able to get the job. You'll never do better. You'll never own a house. You'll never, you'll never receive the miracle you've been looking for and believing for. And they are looking at you, but they're judging you prematurely. They've already put a finality in your life and said your story is over, but your story is not over. Your story is still being told. How many of you got some things that you are believing God for in 2022? If that's you, come on, give God a mighty praise right now. Come on now, the shepherds watched. I said, if you got some things you're believing God for in 2022, make a little noise right now. Let me hear from you. You're you going to contend with the haters. You're going to contend with the doubters. You're going to contend with people who tell you you can't do it. You won't see it. It won't happen. The breakthrough won't come. But tell everybody in your neighborhood, just watch. Yeah, 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 just keep watching. Don't you sleep on my miracle. Don't you sleep on my breakthrough. Don't you sleep on the salvation of my son. Don't you sleep on revival in a generation. Don't you close your eyes because you might miss it. All the promises of God are in him, yes and amen. Just watch. Come on, holler at everybody. Somebody just say, just watch. Y'all, I know it's Christmas Sunday. I'm about to misbehave all up in here because I feel like there's a breakthrough coming in this season that we're in. Somebody give God a shout. It amazes me that in the darkest of the night, they weren't sleeping, they were watching. And the enemy wants to cause your trouble to put you to sleep. But for some of us, he, he, we're not asleep. We got more awake. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Don't sleep on my miracle. Just wait. Just watch. Keep watching and you're going to see breakthroughs and miracles. The, the, the shepherds watched over the precious and they experienced miracles. But then look at verse 25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting on the consolation of Israel. And don't miss this because this is critical. The Bible said, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. So, so the shepherds watched, but here's what Simeon did. Simeon waited. And sometimes you got to wait because they that wait on the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. See, see, the shepherds watched, but Simeon waited. Simeon waited on Jesus. And let me tell you something. Jesus is worth waiting for. Have you ever waited for something that wasn't worth waiting for? I'm going to tell you transparently, I hate to wait. If I go to a restaurant and they say there's a 30-minute wait, I'm out. I will drive 45 minutes to a restaurant that don't have a wait just so I don't have to sit there and wait. Because at least y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Some of y'all are just like that. When I get to the restaurant, I'm, I'm hungry. I don't want to sit there and wait 45 minutes. We were at the mall again a while, a few last week, and we went to Cheesecake Factory, and they said it's going to be an hour and a half. I said, not for me. Hallelujah. Come on now. I hate to wait. Have you ever waited for something that wasn't worth waiting for? 
You've been at a restaurant, you wait for the food, and then you taste it, and you say it wasn't even good. I told y'all a while back, I was at Disney with my kids when they were little, and we were getting on the Winnie the Pooh ride, and they had like a 99 million year wait. Come on. It was like 90 minutes or two hours or something. And I stood in that line with my babies and I was so excited. And I got on that ride and that ride was 77 seconds long. And I said, the devil is a liar. I don't like Winnie or the Pooh. Come on, somebody. But I've come to tell you that Jesus is worth waiting for. Wonderful is worth waiting for. Counselor is worth waiting for. Accept no substitutions. Wait for the real thing. So the Bible says that Simeon's there. He's an old man, and he waited on the Lord. But here's the, here's the caveat. It says, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. See, here's the deal. You're going to make it if you can keep the Holy Spirit upon you. If you can walk by the Spirit. Now, I want you to look at the meaning of Simeon's name. He's an old man, and he said, Lord, I don't want to die until I've seen the Messiah. Lord, this is my prayer. So he would go to the temple every day longing to see the Messiah. And if you look at Simeon's name, one of the derivatives of his name means this. It means one who hears and obeys. It would literally mean the hearkening or the hearkener. Because not only does he hear the word, he obeys the word. A lot of people hear the word, but they don't do the word. It, okay. But the power comes when you hear and obey the word. So Simeon is doing what he does. He said, Lord, don't let me depart. Until I see Jesus, until I see the Christ, don't let me depart until I see the glory of Israel. Can you imagine? He's there in that temple. He's an old man. He's wondering when it's going to happen, but he knows that God has made him a promise, so he is waiting. Can you imagine the day when Mary and Joseph came walking into the temple to fulfill the custom, and the Holy Spirit tapped him on the back and said, hey, go over to that family. He walks up to Mary, and he said, ma'am, may I hold your baby? She said, sure. He takes that baby and looks in his eyes and realizes that he is every pound Messiah and he is every inch Lord. Don't you know that Simeon must have celebrated? Is there anybody who's found Jesus and you are thankful about it today? Have you seen the Lord come through? Come on and give him a mighty praise if you have. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't that good? The shepherds watched, but Simeon waited, and here's what Simeon finally said. Oh, this is where it gets to a whole nother level. He said, my eyes have seen. Whew. My eyes have seen, verse 30, and then look at verse 31. What the Lord has prepared. Yeah. See, see, God prepared some stuff for him that he hadn't seen yet. But finally, the Lord showed him things that he had only heard about. I don't know about you, but I'm in a season in my life where I'm ready to see some stuff that I've only heard about. Y'all don't make me come down there. Is there anybody ready to see some stuff you've only heard about? Are you ready to see people get up out of wheelchairs? Are you ready to see crack pipes on the altar? Are you ready to see revival in a generation? Are you ready to see an awakening in your life? Are you ready to see breakthrough in your family? Oh, come on, come on. Is there anybody ready to see what you've only heard about? Uh, that's where I am in my life. I don't want to just hear about what God's doing in, 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 in California or Arizona or Florida or Africa. Baby, I'm ready for 1687 West Granada Boulevard. I'm ready for your address. Somebody in your spirit right now, just whisper your address right now. Come on, just whisper wherever you live. Whisper it right now. And get ready to see some stuff in your family, in your house that you have only heard about. Glory to God in the highest. Hold on, because he said, I don't want to leave until I see the real thing. And y'all, I've been doing this too long to be fake. 
I, I want the real thing or nothing. Come on now. I want the original recipe. Can I get a witness in this house? I want the real thing. And somebody's getting ready. I just feel this in my spirit, so I'm going to release what I feel I heard the Lord just say. Somebody is getting ready to see something you've only heard about. You're getting ready to see some things in your family you only heard about. And maybe you hadn't seen all you're believing for, but I got a word for you. Maybe you haven't seen the consolation, the breakthrough that you've been believing for, but I've got a word for you. Just wait. Hallelujah. Just wait. But here's what you got to do. You got to worship while you wait. So somebody right now, Go ahead and give God glory and give him praise. I said give God glory and give him praise. I said give God glory and give him praise. Oh, maybe there's people around you who don't believe it, but you need to tell them just wait. <laughs> maybe there's people around you who don't believe your son is going to repent, but just wait. There are people around you that said revival is not going to come to America, but I say the devil is a liar. God is not through with the United States of America. There is still a remnant church that will rise up and say, pour your spirit out, God. Come on, all white people, black people, Hispanic people, rich people, poor people, Asian people, send an awakening. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Just wait. Oh, oh this side. It's just a matter of time for some of you. Tell everybody in your neighborhood, just tell them, say, just wait. Yeah, yeah, it may seem like it's taking a while, but just wait. <laughs> Come on, sometimes you got to bring God a todah. Yo, I, uh, I, I didn't mean to holler a lot this morning. I was going to try not to holler a lot. I was going to try to behave myself, but I've had this crazy feeling of victory ever since I walked through the door. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel something stirring up inside of me. I'm not telling you that I hadn't fought in the last 90 days, even with my own health. But y'all, I feel breakthrough on the horizon. I feel so. Uh, I feel something shifting in the atmosphere. I, I feel like maybe my battle has been intense because my breakthrough is about to be supernatural. Come on now. So sometimes you got to bring God a todah. There are seven steps of praise. Todah means to act like you got it even before you get it. It means to praise God like it's already done. So however you're going to act when you finally see what you've been believing for, if you're going to praise by faith, one, two, three, do it right now. Bring the todah. Yes. Yes. Give me one right here. Somebody give the Lord praise. Somebody, somebody give the Lord praise. Hallelujah, I said, give the Lord a mighty praise. Oh, I need a lot more in this monitor right here. Now watch this. This, this is so powerful to me. Tell everybody in your neighborhood, say, j say just wait. Yeah, just wait. Say, just wait. This ain't going to be like Winnie the Pooh. It's going to be worth it. Well, that old song said, it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Jesus is going to show up. Third thing I want to show you is about Anna. Now, Anna was a prophet. Now, all you people who keep dogging them women, they need to sit down and be quiet. Why don't you sit down and be quiet? You need to study your Bible in context. I, I, I love a good woman preacher. My favorite woman preacher sits right there. Hallelujah. Anna was a prophet who was also in the temple. She, and, it, and if you comment on my Facebook, I'm going to delete it. Just telling you. She was the daughter of Phanuel from the tribe of Asher because I got daughters and they are mighty in the Lord. And I'm telling you, I want to see women rise up in 2022. I kept reading my text. Sometimes you got to straighten folk out. Can I get a witness? Uh, and she was very old. Her husband died when they had been married only seven years. Then she lived as a widow at the age of 84. 
She never left the temple but stayed there day and night worshiping God with fasting and prayer. And coming in that instant, I mean, that quick, God turned things around and she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those who look for the redemption of Israel. Now, here's the, here's the deal. Uh, 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 the shepherds watched, Simeon waited, but what about Anna? Anna worshiped. She said, I'm going to worship him until I see his promises manifest. I want you to get a hold of this thing. I don't want you to miss the clarity of the, of the content of this context of this chapter because it says here that she was an old widow. She's 84 years old. Her husband died after only seven years of marriage. That means she had spent between 50 and 60 years or more without him. And she had been through heartache and she had been through trouble because after only seven years she lost that husband that she loved but for decades she remained faithful to God. She worshiped the Lord when it wasn't easy. She worshiped him through impossible seasons. She worshiped him in the loneliest situations. See, anybody can worship him when everything is going great. Anybody can worship him when you got money in your pocket. Anybody can worship him when everything is just as you want it to be. But when all hell is breaking loose around you and you still got to worship in your mind, mouth something has shifted in your life ah. can you imagine she served and worshiped in these times you ever been there you ever worshiped him wounded you ever worshiped him heartbroken you ever worshiped him disappointed but her name is called Anna and I want you to understand this. She worshiped when it looked like her life was falling apart. But her name Anna, ugh, her name Anna means grace. Somebody say grace. Oh, if you ever become a person with a revelation of grace, look out. Nobody has to beg you to worship because true grace will always worship. You know what grace means? Grace means unmerited favor. Grace means I shouldn't have survived it. I shouldn't have lived through it. I shouldn't have made it. I shouldn't even be where I am today. But the grace of God picked me up, dusted me off, and turned my life around. If you knew where I came from in the pit that I crawled out of, you would say there's no way that you should be there pastor preaching and leading the church but I would tell you today just call me Anna look at your neighbor and say just call me Anna see sometimes folk don't understand your worship sometimes they don't understand your shout sometimes they don't understand your praise but they don't know the grace that brought you into this moment today are there any Annas in the room oh tell everybody in your zip code just call me Anna oh she went to the temple every day. She said, I just can't help myself. I shouldn't even be here. I'm a miracle. So she worshiped. And some of you in this room know exactly what I'm talking about. There were times when the devil thought he hit you with the lethal blow. When you were in college, he thought he had you. When you were in the world, he thought you he had you. But grace came into your life and picked you up and gave you a brand new beginning. And the same grace that got you can get this generation. My whole story is grace. Tell everybody, uh, I'm making you talk to each other too much. I hope, I hope you had a breath mint the day. Come on. Tell everybody around you, say, my whole story is grace. Yeah, grace at the beginning, grace in the middle, and it'll be grace in the end, and it'll be grace for eternity. My whole story is a story of grace. 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 God's grace. Grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace. Grace, God's grace, grace that is greater. 
and all my sin. So Anna worships. After decades of loneliness, she's still worshiping. Coming every day to worship, pray, and prophesy. And right up into her struggle, right up into her loneliness and pain, God shows up in her worship. God don't show, always show up in a building, but he'll sure show up in worship. I said he showed up in her worship. He arrived in a worship, and the Bible said in that instant, in that instant, he, grace met her miracle. Grace led her to miracles. And I'm telling you, if you will worship, your worship will become miracle worship. Your miracle lives somewhere in your worship. It lives somewhere in your thank you, Jesus. It lives somewhere in your hallelujah, because when you worship the Lord, you attract his presence. And I want you to know what has taken you forever in your own strength can be changed in a moment in the presence of the Lord. Worship can change a situation in an instant. So I have learned after 50 50 58 in a month. But I'm eating right. My wife gave me a handful of vitamins today. So if I die, y'all gonna know she poisoned me because I just take them all. I don't even ask what they are. The reality is precious today. God can bring you a miracle in a moment. Medical reports can change, families can be restored, finances can turn around in an instant. You will make it if you decide right now, just worship. You'll survive, I'm telling you, if you'll just worship. See, we see we're looking for miracles, but God is looking for Annas. And when he finds an Anna, he'll perform a miracle. Because when God does a miracle, he needs to get the glory. And what grace does, grace will well up inside of us and we'll say, thank you, Jesus. How about it? Who would say, Pastor, I can look back across my life and I can see that God kept me because I was willing to worship him even in hard seasons. See, see, God is still worthy, even if it's been tough. God is still worthy, even if your heart is broken. God is still worthy, even if this season has been impossible. See, real worship says this, I may not, underst I may not understand everything, and I really don't like this time that I've been in, but I'm going to worship you, Lord. And I believe that if I'll worship you and I'll wait and I'll watch, you'll show up. So just look at somebody that you came with or somebody on your row and just look at them in the eyes and say, just watch. Oh, don't sleep on my breakthrough. Just watch. Well, Pastor Rayleigh, I don't know. Is it going to happen? Just wait. I've lived long enough to know if you wait, God has a way of working stuff out. He really does. Finally, number three, just worship. Here's what I decree over your life. I decree that this year you're going to have Christmas at another level.
don't, our house, we're, we're going to have it at another level. Transparently, I, you know, I, I have a son and God is moving greatly in his life. He's going to be with me this Christmas and I'm excited. Hallelujah. And we were blessed to adopt him out of foster care. And I'm like, hey, don't you sleep on my miracle. When that boy stands up and preaches, I'm going to say, I told you so. Come on. Because I, I, listen, just watch, just wait, just worship. How many of you would like to have Christmas this year on another level? Not, not, I want my team to come out or our team to come out. And I feel like they need to sing over you today. And I believe as they sing over you, they are literally going to release something in your life. They're going to release another level of God's glory. The Bible said in Job 31, 1, you often hear me talk about it. You will decree a thing and it will be established, right? It says, in, in fact, the Proverbs, it said that the power of death and life is in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. It matters so greatly what we say. And so they're not only going to sing over you today, they're going to speak over you. How many of you want faith spoken over you today and blessings? So I want you to stand to your feet. And honey, I just believe that even as they sing, that something's about to be unlocked in your life and you're going to see things transition in an instant. Come on. I, I just pray for families right now who've been in a broken season. I pray for dads who are concerned about their sons and mothers who are concerned about their daughters. I pray for those who've been in a financial crunch this year, right here at Christmas time, and you don't even know what to do. I pray for those who've been dealing with pressure, depression trying to overtake you. I rebuke it off of you right now. And I declare that the blessing of the Lord, the fulfillment of God is coming in your life in this season. Can you slip up your hands and, and receive it? Sing, son. raise up your hands and just declare that over your family. It's another level now. It's another level. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Bless you, honey. The Lord turn his face toward you. Yeah. And a worship. If you feel led to come and stand and kneel in God's presence, since the altars are open, whatever you want to do.
about to shift. Sing it, y'all. Come on.
all right. I want you to lift up your hands. I want Pastor Christian to come up here. Pastor Christian, wherever you're at. I want everybody to slip up your hands right now. I believe the Lord's about to shine in your life in this season with breakthrough. Somebody say, this Christmas is going to be another level. You ready for that? So well, watch the key. Just watch. Just wait. Just worship. Slip up your hands. Pastor Christian is one of my sons in the Lord. I'm so blessed to be a father in the Lord at my age. I started out as a brother. You know, I started out as a son. Then I became a brother. And now these years I'm transitioning into a father. Think about that. In the faith, and I like it. But I'm so proud of this young man right here. And I want him as a representative of his generation just to pray the favor and blessing of the Lord over your life. Will you, will you just slip up your hands and let this mighty man of God do it? Pray, son. Oh, Lord, we thank you for your presence in our midst today, God. And Lord, all moments, Lord, in the altars, Lord, we've been believing you, Lord, and you've been releasing the peace of God that transcends our understanding. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we release the government of peace over your people. Lord, we declare, Lord, that this Christmas season, Lord, this Christmas season as a family, Lord, will be the most peaceful season we have ever experienced, yes. Lord, despite what circumstances, Lord, we may be facing, despite, Lord, what we may be experiencing in the days that we're living in, God, I thank you, Lord, that the government of peace will be mighty in our hearts and our minds yep. and in our homes, Lord, in this season. Father, we thank you right now, Lord, for who you are and what you're doing in our midst, Lord. We bless your people today. Lord, we declare, Lord, that they are blessed in their coming and that they are blessed in their going and that, Lord, they will live life this Christmas season in the abundance of peace that is found in yes, communion sir. with the Holy Spirit. I thank you for it now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And everybody amen. shout amen. Thanks for watching the message. I'm sure this spoke to you. Here's what I want you to do. Why don't you subscribe to this YouTube channel? That way, every time there's a new message, you'll get to hear it. Also, many of you have watched this. Some of you watch on a regular basis. Why not take time and sow? You can give at calvaryfl.com. You can give on your phones, and you can be a part of helping us take this message around the world, the message of hope, the message of Jesus Christ. Can't wait to see you back here real soon.